Hello and welcome to Wildlife Cam. This hyena had dumped a chunk of flesh into the waterhole to wash it. Couldn't quite work out what it was, it was so mangled, but judging by the possible legs it might have been an antelope of some sort. I think this is a barred owl rather than the very similar pearl spotted owl we get here. Pearl spotted owl is a bit small and it has two black spots on the back of the head that look like fake eyes. This is the first of three genets we had at the pond this week. This one I've identified because of the nice neat pathway running along its shoulder. Now they are solitary but not necessarily territorial. It seems that there's some debate about whether they are or not. So maybe they just enjoy their own company but they don't get too angry about it. We've had a lot of sharp scracebook clips in the last few days. It's what I was hoping for when I put the camera there. I didn't think I was going to get much passing traffic because it was not really on a major path. But I thought some of the, the shyer, more reclusive animals would get some nice footage of them.
And there's three of them. That's something I haven't seen before. Looks like the legs are getting thinner and the bodies are getting chunkier. As you can see, this camera is not in the best position for things moving past quickly, but I have other cameras for that. The camera only records 30 second clips, I only just caught the second line. Some very skillful fishing from this hummocorp. Those tilapia move quickly even when it's cold. Gin at number two. Not quite as clear in the patterns, a little bit tatty looking. With lots of whiskers. We aren't likely to get things like civet or porcupine in the garden because the fence isn't easy for them to get through and they can't climb like genets do. In theory it's possible that we could have a leopard if it really wanted to get in it could. So I think if I was going through the camera notifications in the morning and found a leopard had been drinking at the pond I'd hit myself, but that would be amazing. Unlikely though. Spotted bush snake enjoying the winter sun. Now they don't hibernate. In fact, reptiles technically don't hibernate at all. What they do is called brumation, which is slightly different. With hibernation, which is usually associated with mammals like bears when they hibernate for the winter, they go into a full state of complete torpor for months. Whereas with reptiles, the activity is related to the temperature. So if it's a warm winter's day, they'll become active. They don't go fully asleep like hibernating animals do. Genet number three is actually genet number one again. They become quite easy to distinguish once you know what to look for.
A couple of honey badgers speeding past, but we need to see that in slow motion. And this is genet number three. Much clearer markings in genet two, similar to genet one, but when you look at the comparison photographs, you can see they're quite different. Sorry about the haphazard numbering if you have OCD.
The shy bird on the left that's only just getting onto the screen is a greater honey guide. Now they're called honey guides because they lead people to beehives. It sounds like a myth, but it has been very well researched and documented across Africa. The idea being that humans will follow the bird to the hive and the human must leave behind some of the comb. They eat the beeswax and also some of the bee larvae inside, so they need the reward. Now there is a myth that says that if you don't leave anything behind for the honey guide, the next time it'll lead you to something dangerous like a lion or a black mamba, but that does seem to be a myth. No evidence for that, unfortunately. Thanks for watching.